Welcome to Pakistan Game Lodge, Limpopo Province, South Africa. This is where we will gather practical information regarding shot placement. South Africa is undoubtedly one of the prime hunting destinations in the world. Apart from the many foreign hunters that visit South Africa annually, thousands of local hunters frequently spend many days hunting in various places around the country. Every hunter must be able to shoot well. And a good marksman is not necessarily a good hunter. It is important for every hunter to shoot well. In fact, a hunter who doesn't pass the practical shooting test shouldn't even be allowed to be in the hunting field. And being able to kill a paper animal does not necessarily mean that you can do the same with a real animal in the hunting field. This program is brought to you by Leupold, Remington, CZ, Sniper Africa, and the South African Hunters and Game Conservation Association. Before one can discuss shot placement, the hunter must be familiar with his rifle. He must know how much the bullet drops over what distance. And to be able to do that, he must practice regularly. Now the golden rule is, is that for every shot fired on the hunting ground, he must at least fire 10 shots on the shooting range beforehand. Rather shoot at the paper animal, for it is much cheaper to wound than a real animal. You will have no nightmares after wounding a paper buck either. But unfortunately, you won't be able to slaughter it either. Its skin is as thick as its body and vice versa. And this is where the problem lies. A paper buck cannot be skinned. The hunter who has killed it won't know where its vital organs are situated. Good knowledge of the placement of the vital organs of an animal is essential before firing a shot at it in the hunting field. The hunter must be able to skin and cut up the animal ear shot. I know some people dislike doing this, but hunting involves more than just pulling the trigger. The hunter who is not prepared to slaughter an animal or doesn't want to learn more about nature will experience difficulty in advancing on the road of knowledge. Compare this to being a motor car driver. If he doesn't know how to fix a flat tire, he may not reach his destination. In the same way that a person must practice to shoot well, a hunter must practice where to place the shot on the animal. And this is learned in two ways. If we look at the image here, one can identify certain very important organs. First of all, the spinal cord up there, and here the breastbone of the animal. And then we have the heart area here, and these here are lungs, the stomach here, and the lungs overlap the stomach. Now, one can almost see that this is an imaginary triangle area known, the entire area, as the vital area. Secondly, he must train his mind's eye to see the internal organs of an animal. He must be trained so well that he sees the vital areas of an animal every time he looks at it, irrespective of the position in which the animal stands.
Many people say that the best place to shoot an animal is the brain or neck. Now, here we have an impala, that is the brain, and this here, the neck vertebrae. But what happens should you miss? One thing's for sure, it's hours of tracking and only a 50% chance of success. Look at the following scenes and just see how effective a neck or a brain shot is. Impressive? Surely. But is it really the best place to shoot the animal? After the tail, the head of the animal is the most active part of the body. Even when the animal is resting, the tail is always moving, chasing away flies and insects. The same with the head. The ears are moving and the head is moving around, looking in different directions constantly. Should you be aiming at the head of the animal and it moves at the same moment you are squeezing the trigger, you could miss the animal completely. Or even worse, inflict a nasty wound. Such a wound will cause a slow and terrible death. Since a debate about the exact position of an animal's vital organs has been raging for decades, we decided to investigate this issue ourselves and produced irrefutable evidence to put an end to this argument. After many discussions and a lot of contemplation, we decided to shoot an impala through the neck and then freeze the carcass as quickly as possible without removing any of its vital organs. We did, however, make a small incision in the stomach of the animal to release gases building up in the carcass. When the carcass was frozen solid, we took it for a RT scan. To have perspective, we placed a two rand coin in the buck's armpit, right across the place where we thought the buck's heart should be. After scanning, we marked the place where the coin was with a red marker. Note that the buck's forelegs were stretched to the front, not being in the normal standing position. During scanning, we made an interesting observation. The heart does not lie in the center of the chest, but slightly to the left. At first, we thought it possible that the buck's organs might have moved during transportation and freezing. But because the animal was lying on its right side while being frozen, the heart could not have moved to the left. However, this deviation from the center line of the chest is so small that it is negligible. When looking at the scan of the heart from the front, you can see that the position of the coin was about spot on in relation to the height of the organ. Nevertheless, it is still slightly lower than the horizontal central point. The scan taken from below shows that the coin was slightly to the front and that we should have placed it slightly back to be exactly on the center line. After the carcass has been defrosted, we pulled back the foreleg for it to be more or less in the normal standing position. Note that the thigh practically concealed the red mark where the coin had been. This means that the imaginary vertical center line at the back of the thigh more or less crosses the center of the heart. The carcass was then cut in half from front to back after the head was removed. By studying the scans and the photographs in detail, we came to the following conclusions. The entire section from the spinal column at the top of the carcass to the breastbone at the bottom and the stomach at the back is filled by some or other vital organ. There is hardly any space between the heart and breastbone. Therefore, it would be virtually impossible to shoot between the heart and the breastbone without hitting one of the two. The lungs extend upwards to touch the spinal column. The lungs are covering both sides of the heart and are also extending to the front of the carcass to almost reach the upper breastbone. The main artery runs from the heart underneath the spinal column to the back of the body. It also runs to the brain of the animal. From these pictures you can clearly see that it is virtually impossible to miss either the heart or the breastbone when placing a shot in this area. It is also impossible to miss either the lungs or the spinal cord. 
If, however, you shoot the animal right over the spinal cord without hitting one of the dorsal vertebrae, it will only be wounded and you will probably never see it again. It will also be impossible to miss the lungs if you shoot the animal from the side through the upper part of the heart. Should you also shoot too far to the front of the animal, the chances are good that you will still hit a part of the lungs. If one compares the area of the brain to that of the heart and lungs, it is clear that the latter is much bigger. Let's have a look at these pictures taken of the inside of various animals. This is the vital organ area of a kudu, actual size. Here you can see the heart and the lungs. If we compare that to the head of a kudu, also actual size, and we remove from this model the brain, now we can compare the two areas. This is 36 centimeters by 31 centimeters, and this is 7 centimeters by 13.5 centimeters. It's obvious that there's a huge difference between the two target areas. If one looks at the brain of the kudu from the front, it is only 7 centimeters by 9 centimeters big. Let us turn our attention now to the blessbuck and its particulars. Here is the vital organ area of the blessed buck. You can see the heart and these are the lungs. But to give you a better idea of the vital organ area, let me take this model apart. This then, the vital organ area. Then we go to the head of the blessed buck. And again, we have to look for the brain area, which is this area. And again, for us to compare, I will take the brain out of this particular model. Now, sizes and the comparison. The vital organ area is 22 centimeters by 17 centimeters. 22 centimeters by 17 centimeters. And the brain only 11 centimeters by 5.5 centimeters. Again, the difference very, very obvious. This is the vital organ area of the oryx. And here you can see the heart and also the lungs. And to give you a better idea of the actual size, I will remove the inner part of this module. Now we can compare this to the brain. Here you can see the head and only this small part here is the brain. Again, I will remove that from the model. Now we can compare the two. And again, you can see it. The vital organs area is 23 centimeters by 23 centimeters and the brain only 13 centimeters by 6 centimeters. A huge difference once again. Now to explain this better, we've taken an oryx head and we cut it in half from the front to the back. Then we drill the holes through the middle of the brain and push the dull stick through the hole. After that, we join the two pieces together again with a dull stick still through the brain. Now it is clearly visible how high the brain is situated in the head of the animal. Therefore, to hit the brain spot on, one will have to try and break the dull stick with a projectile. Should you miss the dull stick with only 5 cm on the top, you could miss the animal completely. Should you miss it with 5 cm at the bottom, you could wound the animal, especially if a smaller caliber is being used. 
To aim at the neck of the oryx is also very risky because the neck vertebrae are located much lower than one usually thinks. It will be very easy to shoot over the neck vertebrae, inflicting only tissue wounds. On the other hand, should one shoot too low in the neck, one could sever the esophagus, causing a serious wound, but the animal could still live for some time and only die during the night or the next day. Usually a wound in the neck does not release a lot of blood, thus making track and find difficult. Compare this to the heart-lung area. We also drilled a hole through the middle of the heart and then used the same dull stick method. Here it is clearly visible that a mistake by 5 cm shooting at the middle of the heart of the oryx is completely negligible. Therefore, the heart-lung area is a much safer area to shoot at. Although it won't always be as spectacular as the brain or neck shot, it is undoubtedly a much safer shot. The following scenes all depict heart-lung shots fired at various animals. The discussion about shot placement can become very technical, but it is however necessary for us to discuss some important issues. A shot in the heart is always a fatal shot. The animal will not run far before it collapses, and to follow the trail will be easy because it loses a lot of blood. To illustrate this point, we shot a blessed buck in the heart with a CZ rifle in 306 caliber, mounted with a Leopold scope and using Remington ammunition. By the reaction of the animal, one could immediately see that it was a fatal shot. The blood squirted from the animal and it died instantly. A hard shot will not always drop the animal on the spot. After we skinned the animal and removed the intestines, we had a good look at the vital organs. Here you can see that the bullet penetrated both the heart and the lungs. I believe that a shot just above the heart kills the animal faster because the heart valves are destroyed and the blood pressure falls immediately making the animal dizzy and unstable. This observation is not based on any scientific research, but on personal experiences of shots placed high and low on the heart by various hunters. The lungs are quite another story. A shot too high through the lungs, particularly with certain animals like blue willebeest, could cause hours of tracking and only a 50% chance of success. The following scene is a good example of an animal shot through the lungs. It took off like lightning, only to become dizzy and unstable and eventually keeling over. It took less than 30 seconds from the shot was fired to the actual dying of the animal. The entrance wound is high behind the shoulder, thus the bullet travelled through the upper part of the lungs. Personally, I don't believe an animal can survive a shot through the lungs, be it a high or a low shot. But the animal may survive long enough, discouraging pursuers, causing them to give up. The animal will most probably die during the night or the following day, 
and by the time the carcass is found, it will be unfit for use. The problem with a high shot through the lungs is that the blood flowing from the wounds first fills the chest cavity before it reaches and bleeds through the holes in the skin. This makes tracking the wounded animal very hard. A low shot through the lungs will cause bleeding from the wounds through the holes in the skin to start sooner. Everyone involved in this research came to the conclusion that one almost cannot place the shot on the body of the animal too low. Should one shoot it so low that only the breastbone is damaged, the animal won't get very far. On the other hand, a shot that is placed too high on the body is usually just a wound. Now the question arises, how does one determine, looking at the live animal, where the vital organs are situated inside the animal? Using the information that we've gathered, it becomes easier. To locate the heart-lung area, divide the animal's body in three parts, from front to back and from top to bottom, in thirds as the picture indicates. The best place to aim at is the first third from the front and the first and second third from the bottom. Looking at this area, one can see that this is where the heart, lungs and part of the spinal column are situated. The hunter must be familiar with the location of the different organs in this area of the animal's body. In the same way, the body of a live animal can be divided into imaginary thirds as indicated. It will, however, be the best if shots are limited to the bottom third. A good indicator is to look for the knob formed by the elbow at the back of the thigh. An imaginary vertical line through this knob runs more or less through the center of the heart. The most important aspect of shot placement is for the hunter to realize that he's aiming at a target inside the animal and not on it. If you have a side view of the animal, it is an easy shot. Aim low at the shoulder or even low behind the shoulder blade. If you hit the animal where you have aimed, it will certainly be dead. If the animal stands at an angle, the spot where the shot must be placed changes. The angle must be calculated so that the projectile moves through the intestines and hits the vital organs. It is useful to watch animals that are standing in different positions. Try to visualize where the heart and lungs are. Then determine a spot on the skin where the projectile must hit so as to follow a route to reach the target inside the animal. Now that we have established where the vital organs of the animal are situated, it is important for the hunter to practice to shoot at a target inside the animal and not on it. To practice, a simple model can be made, making use of a life-size target of any animal. Hang a bell on the inside of the model in the exact spot where the heart should be. Shoot at the heart, this is on the target, and every time you hit the heart, the bell will ring. Position the model in a safe place, use an air rifle, and shoot at the invisible heart from various standing positions. The more one practice, the easier it becomes to hit the target. In this case, the heart.
Now that we have practiced on the model, it's time to shoot a couple of animals and see how close we can get to the heart of each of them. This shot was placed on the front of the shoulder and the animal went down immediately. Here the entrance wound to the front of the left shoulder is clearly visible. The exit wound on the opposite side is behind the right shoulder. The Remington 220 grain express core locked projectile travelled through one of the lungs and also through the upper part of the heart. The female kudu was standing at an angle, therefore the shot had to be placed in front of the shoulder in order to hit the vitals inside. The kudu only ran 60 meters before it collapsed. The entrance wound is to the front of the right shoulder and the exit wound behind the left shoulder. The projectile hit the one lung as well as the upper part of the heart. The blue wildebeest was hit just behind the shoulder and it took off like lightning, only to die 70 meters away. It left a good blood trail which was easy to follow. The entrance wound is just behind the shoulder. Here it is clear that the projectile hit the lungs and the heart. Take note that the wound is in the upper part of the heart.
The shot was low on the shoulder of the Oryx. It was instantly clear that both the front legs were broken, leaving the animal incapacitated. It was a very good shot and it took less than 30 seconds for the animal to die. The bullet travelled through both the lungs as well as through the heart. A perfect shot. A hunter should never stop training his mind's eye to see the vital organs of animals. Look at wild animals standing in different positions and decide where you are going to shoot the animal so that the projectile reaches the correct spot inside the animal. Look at the following animals. The coloured spots show exactly where you should shoot the animal to hit either the heart or the lungs or both. In conclusion, practice regularly, not only on normal targets, but also on a profile target of an animal. Even better, build your own model as explained and practice with an air gun. It is easy and very cheap to practice this way. Remember that for every one shot fired at a live animal, at least 10 practicing shots must be fired beforehand on the target. Always shoot at a target inside the animal and not on it. Avoid brain and neck shots as far as possible. Some hunters argue that one is wasting too much meat when shooting at the heart-lung area. Well, rather waste a little meat with a fatal shot to the body of the animal than wounding the animal and not getting any meat at all. By making use of premium hunting bullets like the Remington Core Lock, meat damage can be limited to the absolute minimum. Firearm safety can never be overemphasized. Treat them with respect and always as loaded. Remember the old saying, a moment of madness can lead to a lifetime of sadness. The South African Hunters and Game Conservation Association wishes to thank all sponsors that contributed to this production. They are Leopold Optics, CZ, Sniper Africa, and Remington, who supplied all the ammunition. Special thanks to Buckstown Game Lodge and their friendly personnel for assisting us in obtaining the necessary scenes and the provision of the animals for this production. <laughs>